the stealth genre is one of the red-headed bastard children of gaming. But goddammit, it's a red-headed stepchild that I'm fucking fond of. Now, when I call it that, what I really mean to say is that for every 5 trillion Maddens, or shooters featuring bald space marines, or bald Madden space marine shooters to keep the slack-jawed fraternity bro crowd happy, there might, if you say 12 Hail Marys, chuck a penny from 86 in a water fountain, and make a wish while the planets somehow manage to align fucking perfectly, be one fucking game released in the stealth genre. Which is why you assholes in the gaming press who actually have the fully engorged balls to claim that there are a glut of titles in the stealth genre can kindly chomp down on the fattest part of my cock. And around the early part of the 2000s, aughts, whatever the fuck you assholes want to call this wasted decade we're currently living in, the stealth genre started to genuinely pick up some steam, though. Now, it's certainly worth mentioning that Metal Gear Solid and Thief the Dark Project are arguably the first fully realized 3D stealth games ever created, and they were both released in the same year, mere months apart. Personally, I happen to think that Thief is 20 times better, and that's not just because I'd like to take a poisoned hacksaw to Hideo Kojima's face, it's because Thief had what Metal Gear Solid didn't. Subtlety. Now, that isn't to say that the original Metal Gear Solid didn't have sneaking. As far as the series go, I'd say the first game in the series is probably the closest to a sneaking game as the series has ever actually come. What with Metal Gear Solid 2 forcing you to take mandatory stealth breaks so you can open fire in first person on some soldiers in one of the most transparent attempts to placate the Kill Zone slash Halo slash Resistance Fall of Game Design subset that I've probably ever witnessed, and Metal Gear Solid 4 clearly far more interested in boring you to death with cutscenes and lengthy mandatory game installs than offering you gameplay of any description to say nothing of stealth, but hey, at least it's got a gibbering cap addicted monkey, so that's something. The original was released on the PS1 in 1998, and was one of the best-selling titles on the system, so it shouldn't surprise us at all that in an unabashed attempt to milk a dead horse, Konami opted to remake the 98 classic, except now, bullet time. Ooh. Honestly, I would love to have said it in this pitch meeting. All right, my fellow corporate assholes, let's think of a way to make money off a new product without actually exhibiting creativity of any description. Well, uh, fat white douchebags who breathe heavily through their mouths seem to have a fondness for Japanese cartoons, so let's toss some of that shit in there. Wait a minute, doesn't this series already have quite enough animu nonsense? I mean, for fuck's sake, isn't Snake's computer expert's name short for fucking otaku convention? Shut up and drink your ramen, eh? Oh, also, because the protagonist's name isn't sexually suggestive enough, we're gonna go ahead and call the game The Twin Snakes, because, after all, why just have one snake when you can have two? But let's briefly veer away from Double Entendre Turnpike and actually discuss what makes this pablum so unappealing for anyone over the age of eight. And just looking at the box, things should begin to come into focus for you. Now... Call me crazy, but I've never actually understood how the Metal Gear Solid series gets away with typing the tactical espionage action tagline on their game's cases when the average Metal Gear game inevitably concludes with the protagonist launching stinger missiles at what appear to be dinosaurs from Power Rangers. Now, handing a single man a rocket launcher and saying, be sneaky now, is like handing J.J. Abrams millions of dollars to make a movie and then saying, no lens flare now. The game's story credibility immediately suffers for this choice, as it more than strains credulity to honestly have to believe that the government would send a single man into a well-fortified military installation with nothing but a pistol and a pat on the back and say, now kill an entire terrorist army snake, and if you get hurt, eat some fucking rations, pal. While you're at it, don't pick up any of the assault rifles the enemies are carrying. That would make far too much sense. Just choke them. Not realistic choking, mind you, but this jerky-ass looks-like-snake-is-having-a-conniption-fit type choking. On you go, ass. Asshole. But all these flaws were present in the original Metal Gear Solid and continue to be present in the series today, so I should probably just discuss what actually sets this balls-in-your-mouth hilariously bad game apart from its progenitor. Now, allow me to set the scene for you fine people. Snake has just infiltrated Outer Heaven and, after witnessing the DARPA chief's untimely death, encounters the arms tech president rigged to explode with C4 tripwire. Just then, Revolver Ocelot shows up. Fight time, right? Well, 
If your definition of fight is watch cyborg ninjas in bullet time carve up a perfect square from a concrete ceiling and throw it at Snake, who, in one of the worst slow-mo animu sequences in the history of video games or films, does a perfect backflip to evade a block of motherfucking concrete, then yes, it's fight time. With how these games indulge in glorified anime power-up stances for every boss character, you'd think no one in Japan had ever seen Indiana fucking Jones. I mean, Revolver Ocelot stands there for five minutes juggling his firearm to show off, so if Solid Snake is even one-sixteenth as manly as his overblown I wish I was Wolverine from the 90s X-Men cartoon voice actor David Hayter would like us to believe, wouldn't he just blow this guy's head clean off his goddamn shoulders while he's busy practicing his fucking twirling? I mean, this is Solid Snake we're talking about. The same guy who later in the game does a backflip on a missile mid-flight before taking aim at a helicopter, delivering a perfectly aimed shot with his own missile launcher, and of course, taking time to pose dramatically in front of the explosion. It's clear from the poorly written dialogue sequences that Hideo Kojima wants us all to think Snake is heading into seemingly insurmountable odds, but it seems like every time you turn around, this dildo's doing a backflip from 20 stories up and landing on his feet, or executing Shoryukens on a fucking kaiju robot. It's the sort of shit that makes Square Enix fans finish in their pants with glee. You really have to experience it to fully grasp the short bus caliber fucking idiocy of it all. Just watching it, I feel like my IQ dropped a good 20 points, which, mind you, still leaves me well in advance of the pack as far as internet game reviewers are concerned, but is still far lower than I'm actually comfortable with. The hilarity of it all is only enhanced upon the realization that Konami, in conjunction with Silicon Knights, the developer of far more recent travesty, Too Human, actually believe that they're smarter than the player and attempt to demonstrate it more than once. I'll just give you a for instance. Like I said, the DARPA chief died, now the Armstead president dies of a mysterious heart attack, but not before telling you to contact Meryl a woman who's infiltrated enemy lines as well, when, in an uncharacteristic spasm of common fucking sense, Snake has the gall to actually ask, How do I contact her? What frequency is she on? The colonel merely replies, The back of a box. Colonel Vague Douchebag, signing out. Now, anyone with a fully functional thinking cap has already flipped the game box over and seen Meryl's frequency immortalized on the back, put two and two together and rang that poofy-haired slag up. Here's the problem, though, and it's a familiar one. GameStop. Now, I could waltz into GameStop right now with a GameCube disc freshly used to trowel cement and cleaned off with razor wire, and GameStop would still take it in order to boost their trade numbers, whether it has a box or not. So it stands to reason that more than one unfortunate asshole purchased the Twin Snakes used from everyone's favorite video game retailer, and, after managing to outflank the employees' clumsy attempts to sell them subscriptions to shitty magazines and place a reserve on the latest installment in the Naruto franchise, pop the game in to discover a new and exciting revelation. GameStop Incorporated really couldn't care less if their customers are even remotely satisfied so long as they make a quick buck. Now, feel free to insert a lazy prostitution-related metaphor there, not that any of this is Kojima's fault, but seeing as I burn the man in effigy on a nightly basis, we're gonna go ahead and lump it together all the same. If Metal Gear Solid's your thing, good for you. I'm sure when you hit high school, you'll begin to recognize the merits of superior stealth games and the pitfalls of I tedious cutscenes and grade school anymore. political conspiracies for the most part ripped off from Deus Ex. But either way, avoid this game like the irate gamer avoids public speaking classes. And... While you're at it, avoid the irate gamer as well. And make me a sandwich. I'm Razor Fist. God fucking speed.